Hey folks, here we are at the Tour de France, ready to take a look at all the bike computers that the pros use. And this is interesting because there's a lot of personal preference that goes into this, including some interesting quirks that you probably would not have expected. Let's dive into the team paddock area and check things out. Now, once inside, masks are required for the safety of the riders, but I think our microphone should work just fine here. So what you see right here are all of the team bikes lined up on top of their cars. Just coming in, you can see Team Bike Exchange pulling in right there. It's uh, about an hour and 15 minutes until the start of the race. Uh, the teams are just showing up right now. They usually show up about an hour and a half or so ahead of time. Uh, basically, the riders coming out on the team buses, the bike mechanics with the bikes there. Uh, you can see these are the bikes that are actually for race day here and then they have backup bikes uh, so if you look see this is all actual rider bikes for today a starting point versus all these over here are all their spares and they'll redistribute these among the team cars once they pop these off and get going here okay so first up here we are at team total energy and these guys are just heading on in to check in he's running an edge 830 with a nice little like custom skin on it uh, but that touchscreen edge 830 is one of the smaller ones been out a couple years now but it works just fine they've got the uh, shimano power meters as well ducking under the tree getting over to check out Ineos here so diving into this again looking at their spare bikes usually if they've got power meters in their spare bikes in this case they do you can see the uh, shimano power meter in the back there that little bump uh, that means it's usually the same it's not usually it's always the same on their primary bike and you can also see the little bump right there as well so that's the right side and then the left side uh, bump is just down inside right there. Heck, there's even a Shimano team right there. The actual Shimano reps just doing their thing, checking the team, dropping off stuff. And another Shimano team here as well. And that's the thing that you're gonna see is that a lot of the teams, when they're sponsored by Shimano, the Shimano is basically the entire drivetrain, of course. Uh, but with that, Shimano usually wants the sponsorship of the power meter as well, that whole kind of complete kit, if you will. Swinging over into Team Trek right now. You can see it's a SRAM sponsor team. Uh, there we go, that access, that quark power meter hanging out right there on that. Uh, notable though is that they are also sponsored by Wahoo for some of the components, but in this case, not sponsored for the power meter, just for the trainers and uh, the head units. So here we got uh, VLON putting on their GoPro for the day, the GoPro session. You can see getting it paired up, session number 11 that he's got set up right now. Team Boar's hands grow here. You can see that they are running the Shimano power meters. That's the uh, Shimano power meter right there on the Dura set. Now again, all these bikes right here are their spare bikes. They've got no actual ID tags versus all the bikes over here are the ones that the riders will actually be starting off with today. Uh, you can see on the handlebars, by the way, is that sort of race profile. It's funny for all the technology that these companies have at their disposal, the riders just tend to prefer a very quick glanceable uh, kind of stage overview of the sprints and all that kind of stuff. Again, we can see that same profile on their handlebars at Intermarche. This is the team that actually runs at Brighton Bike Computers, uh, the only team here at the Tour that's sponsored by Brighton. Now, from a power meter standpoint, Intermarche is running Shimano as well. Hey, and a quick note, if you're finding this video interesting or useful, give it a like at the bottom there. It really does help out this video quite a bit. So in the case of Team Israel, they're running rotor power meters on there. And then notably, they're also the only team to run the Hammerhead Crew, uh, Crew 2 in particular on the handlebars. They even got some really fancy out front mounts as well. Now, it's common on many teams, the bikes that are the spares, the ones that are on the team cars in case of a you know equipment malfunction or a crash or whatever the case is do not have power meters on there and that's simply because from like a pairing standpoint in the case of a bike crash or a bike swap the last thing they really want to be dealing with and the last of their concerns is trying to get that power meter data they just simply want to get caught up to the rest of the peloton so you can see one of the riders just came out here at astana and tossed on his edge 530 you got the extra buttons on there that makes it obvious that it's an edge 530 versus an edge 830 i haven't seen the edge 1040 yet today just came out a month or so ago so really only the most like adventurous rider is going to be riding that in terms of folks that want to kind of be on the latest greatest cutting-edge stuff speaking of Shimano there's that Shimano contingent uh, making its way through things here over team Bob rain we can see again that Shimano power meter down there which I know sounds like it's kind of the overall theme of things which it, it sort of is to be honest I mean Shimano sponsors a lot of drive trains and with that they sponsor a lot of power meters. You can see those Team DSM riders heading out there. They are a Wahoo sponsored team. It looks like he had the Wahoo Bolt on there. Presumably the Wahoo Bolt V2. A bit hard to see from far away there. I'll check it out once he gets back and see what it is exactly. Team Education First, always an easy to spot team. Uh, in this case, they're a Wahoo sponsored team. So from a bike computer standpoint, they are running the Wahoo Bolt uh, V2. And then from a power meter standpoint, they are running the power to max uh, down there on those crank sets. So not using the Wahoo power meter. There's no team that's actually using the Wahoo power meter at the tour this year. Maybe down the road a little bit. Uh, they are running all speed play though. So I could see that perhaps happening again down the road. But in that case, that would mean Wahoo would have to take on basically two sponsorships, uh, not just the bike computer side and the uh, trainer side, but also then the power meter side as well, which again means more money. You can see here at FDG all running Edge 830s, except one rider running the Edge 1030 plus. 
Uh, it's actually exceptionally rare for uh, the key mechanics to put out the bike computers ahead of time. The vast majority of the cases, the actual riders themselves are putting the bike computers on their handlebars, they're owning that. Uh, but FDJ kind of has a bit of a long history with uh, technology and what do they do and don't adopt things. In some cases, they're like early adopters. In other cases, they uh, prefer to sort of stay away from the tech side of it. So it's just sort of notable to me that uh, the mechanics actually did place those bike computers out there. But hey, whatever works, works. They've even color coded their scooter. How awesome is that? Team b, &B here running FSA Power Meter. Uh, FSA Power Meter is actually kind of a combination between them and Power 2 Max. Uh, it's been around though, you've seen it for a number of years. Over here at Lotto Sedell as he heads on out, uh, running the Shimano Dirt Ace Power Meter as well. You can see that just down here on this unit. Again, telltale sign, telltale little knob there that it is that one. Now you can see he does not have a bike computer on there yet because it's just going to check in up front. So he's not uh, not tossing that on. As I said earlier, most of the riders do kind of keep that in the back pocket to the last second. Uh, there's still about 40 minutes till race time. So they're gonna keep that kind of off their bike just so nothing gets lost. Here at Team UAE, the only team that's running the SRM head units, uh, the PC8s, and then also the SRM power meters down below. They have one hell of a coffee station built up there. But then next to that, if you look deep inside that cubby hole is that Elite Justo that Brandon Trainer just announced. If you haven't seen my full trainers of the Tour de France video, check that out in the corner there. Uh, and then below that, you see a branded uh, Team UAE scooter. So they have got it all there in that cubby hole. That is like the place to stash yourself in to go along for the ride. Here at Quick Step, you can see those uh, Shimano power meters again on these spare bikes, uh, which seems to be roughly half and half in terms of which teams are bothering to put the uh, power meters on the spare bikes and which not. And then here's Team Bike Exchange as well with the spare bikes uh, on there having power meters on. You can also see up top there, kind of the stage overview sticker uh, placed on every single one of the stems. Uh, almost every single one. Uh, rider number 204 help does not apparently want a sticker. Hello, quick question for you. I noticed that Dylan does not have a sticker for the ride profile. Is that like a personal preference that he doesn't want to know the course or? I don't know, I need to ask. So I just went to ask to find out what the dealio is on Dylan's bike there. Uh, she didn't know she's gonna find out though, so she's kinda of curious as well. I can confirm, he just hates it, he doesn't like it. <laughs> he just hates it, doesn't yeah. like it, okay. So everybody else has him and he doesn't want it. I understand that feeling sometimes, so oh, yeah. perfect. Appreciate it, thank you. That is awesome. If you see my video on climate comparison between the uh, Garmin, the Wahoo, and the Hammerhead crew, there became a point in that uh, multi-hour trek in the Dolomites where I hated it as well. So I can understand just not wanting to know how much suffering is coming up still. So two important things here at Yumbo Visma. One is the Edge 830 that's on the bike back there uh, on top of the Shimano uh, power meter. And then two being, of course, the coffee machine pouring into the smile cup. I mean, if that's that's basically all you gotta know about the Tour de France is it's run on coffee. Yeah, I'm impressed overall. I'd say this is the first year that I've seen that the vast majority, actually more than half, I think, of the uh, spare bikes that are running Shimano anyways, and even the SRAM one that I saw uh, do have the power meters on there. In fact, here is uh, Movistar with the SRAM access, the Quark power meter up there, and you can see it is on their spare bikes as well. Uh, they got their Garmin's already placed on there. These look like Garmin Edge uh, 830s. You can tell by the lack of buttons on them. So one button on there, Edge 830, Edge 830, nothing. And look at this, an Edge 1040 Solar right there. Another Edge 1040 Solar, another Edge 1040 Solar. Impressive, in handwritten notes, apparently the printed stickers hasn't made it to Movistar entirely. Uh, you can see one, no sticker, sticker, no sticker, no sticker. Uh, the blue tape there as well, white tape, I'm impressed. Uh, no sticker, They're, they've got quite the collection of routing information. These Edge 1040 Solars out here are getting a little more juice in this bright sun. Portugal. Where are you from? Portugal. Portugal? Portugal. Yeah. A couple fans there wanted me to get their photo. I don't think they knew me, they just they just wanted me to get their photo. I got the, got the photo pressed up on. There goes the Team Education First folks out there. Got some really pretty head units on there. Some of them, not all of them have put them on though. Uh, so you can see a couple of them have put them on, some have not. Those are the Wahoo bolts there that are running as I mentioned earlier on. Now, after my last video uh, with the bike trainers and a little bit of highlighting of the washing machines, a bunch of you asked for more details on the washing machines. I regret to inform you, all those bins are closed up right now on every single one of these team buses uh, because they pretty much head out. So as soon as uh, this stage gets started, these guys will follow in behind the entire uh, tour and the caravan there. Eventually they'll jump out of the highway and kind of skip ahead, but they'll go out the same way. So they are ready to roll uh, as soon as the stage starts, which is in about 20 or so minutes. So just to sort of show you where all these guys are going at this point, uh, they've got about 10 more minutes to check in. So Team UAE come back with their SRM PC8s, uh, power meters as well, SRM power meters. 
And so they've got to go all the way down to the start line area and they've got to actually sign in on the screen. Like literally they have to sign their name on this giant board that indicates they've signed in. If they don't sign in, they don't, they don't race that day. It's as simple and old school as that. It's a little bit of a haul for me to go all the way down here, but we're getting there. Here it comes quick step, sliding in. So you can see they're gonna go double in here. The Yumbo Visma rider riding up the front. And then we get to the very front here, we got the uh, official cars, the commissaires, working our way up to the beginning here. Sign in, Team Yumbo Visma. Got the Edge 830s. Yumbo Visma there. Quick step with the Edge 830s as well. Wahoo Bolt V2s. There goes Team Education first. Riding it up with those well decorated Bolt V2s. So you can see the teams head on up, they get signed, and then they head on back out again. Is there a specific reason you chose the Edge 1040? Yeah, you know, here on the technical uh, routes around the uh, yeah, we are today and also all the other stages in the tour. Yep. It's perfect with a bigger map and you have a better better eye and detail for all the small roads. So yep. for sure that's an advantage. What were you riding before it came out? Uh, the 830. 830? So I like that also a lot, I mean for maybe a bit more hilly or harder climb stages. Yep. You save a bit of the weight. So, yeah, then it's also yeah, less important with a big map. So that's, that's a good thing with the 830 also. Gotcha. Appreciate it. Good luck today. Yep. So you can see Quick Step running a blend of the A30 and the 1040 for a couple of the riders here. Here with the Umbo Bisma uh, running the A30 across the board by the looks of it. I'm going to see if I can zip my way all the way back out of here again. A couple minor stragglers. After they've signed in, some of the riders will stop by, visit fans they may know, friends and family. I think that's one of the things you forget is that here comes the yellow jersey right now. One of the things you forget is that these riders, the vast majority of them aren't necessarily household names. Uh, and they've got friends and family that have come a long way to see them. Uh, it's kind of neat to see that out here. Uh, they just say hi to those people that have trekked all the way to these towns. You can see these Wahoo Bolt V2 uh, polka dot edition there. Pretty impressive. And in go the Movistar riders. Edge A30, Edge 1040 Plus, or Edge 1040 Solar, sorry, not Plus. Edge 1040 Solar again. It's gaining popularity. I wouldn't be surprised to see, you know, buy like the Vuelta or something, uh, a bunch more of the Garmin sponsor teams to have that. There goes the FDJ riders to get uh, off the start to probably sign in here. Get a little bit close to that sign in time. Uh, still, nonetheless, getting down there. Now, as always, it's a bit of a blur the start here, getting things uh, rocking as all these teams come in, really have that like 90 minute countdown until they're off and running. So I want to throw on the screen right now all of the power meters, uh, which teams are using which power meters, and I've denoted which ones are sponsored, which is all of them as far as I can tell. Now, the most important thing you guys have been asking for, the washing machines. Uh, you can see right here we have two washing machines. These ones are uh, an LG and a Beko, Beko. Uh, and it looks like both of them are dual wash and dry. So important to be able to do that. Very, very common in Europe and thus satisfying the urge for the washing machines that many of you have asked for. You can see Inuus and Edge 830 and Edge 1040 up there, 1040 Solar heading on out. We're gonna to try to go down and find Team Israel and see if they're still there though to catch their hammerhead crews. So Aja Duar running a Wahoo Bolt there. And then over here we have Team Israel with the hammerhead crew, crew two in particular. You can see that on there. That's interesting right there, by the way. So Team Israel is a hammerhead sponsored team, but one of the guys is running a Garmin. It looks like Edge 830 from looks of it. Might've been 530, but hard to tell with those gloves in the way there. I'll put it on the screen exactly what it is, but a bit surprising to see that. So at this point, it is uh, six minutes till the start. Wow, no bike computer on that truck ride at all. Uh, he's got the Wahoo sticker on there, but no bike computer on him. I saw that on one of the earlier stages, but didn't have a chance to kind of get a picture of it. I do understand though, he actually has it in his back pocket. He just doesn't want to see it on his handlebars himself. Okay, so at this point, there is two minutes left till the start. Uh, so these guys get in the commissary cars out front there, uh, the medical car, 
blast riders are coming through right now, just kind of uh, squeaking in again to get to back the Peloton. Remember, it's a neutralized start for the first, I think, five and a half or so K. So basically, that means uh, it's kind of a pretty chill, like an early group ride, like just, you know, getting rolling. Uh, no, nothing going on until after the neutralized kind of zone there. And so you can see here, all the team cars are lined up, ready to follow right behind. Again, one per team here. And then there's another set that's uh, usually elsewhere in the Peloton. In fact, there's an entire guide on this. I might do a whole video on the roadbook, which dictates exactly the order, how things work, where teams and vehicles are, where the motos are, etc. It's pretty cool stuff. Weaving his way there. I think you might enjoy. I'm just going to show this here, it's kind of unedited, just kind of walking through this. Just give you context on how long this is as I walk through it. The uh, Team Total Energy guys are kind of uh, waiting to the last second right here, but they'll get there. Let's see all the spare bikes up there. That's astounding. I dropped this apparently 10 minutes ago. Just found it on the GoPro. I didn't realize I dropped it until I saw it on the ground right there. My uh, GoPro mic hoodie thing. You can see here as all these vehicles essentially get lined up to go out. So they've got, again, a very specific order here that they're going to follow all the way out. There's even like tow trucks in this involved. You can see most of the team buses are buttoning up, getting ready to go out as well here in just a moment. Again, it's a very kind of orderly process. It's all designed to move this gigantic thing as efficient as you can. Now with that, hope you found this video interesting or useful. If so, go ahead and lock that like button at the bottom there. It really helps out the video quite a bit. Or consider hitting subscribe for plenty more sports technology stuff and maybe a bit more tour stuff as well.